Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's project I thought we'd have a bit of fun and create these little berry and leaf necklaces. Whether you want to do red sort of bright berries or whether you want to do the slightly more complex blackberries, mix and match them both and whether or not you want to do bright coloured leaves like I've done here or more sort of natural coloured leaves with the greens and the bronzes and the golds, it's completely up to you. I'll show you the techniques we need and it's not that difficult to do as you will see as we go along. I've done this one as a few weeks back our local polymer clay group had autumn as a theme and I came up with this necklace to show them what to do with some autumn berries and leaves and since people have been asking me to do it as a tutorial so here it is. I must admit probably like a lot of you one of the first things I ever made when I started working with polymer clay were berries and blackberries were one of my favourites um, and I have a very specific way of doing my blackberries so you get this nice variation of colour so they're not all completely black because when you look at them in real life you do get that variation and the same with the berries they may look completely the same but when you look carefully there's little odd bits of colours going through them and again it's all about looking at what's real and then trying to create it in polymer clay. Rather than using bright coloured clay, you could use scrap clay under this one because we're using mica powders and gilders paste to get that lovely sheen on them and they work just as well on just plain black clay or dark coloured scrap clay. So let's run through the equipment you need for today's project. I'll be using a polymer clay blade. I sometimes refer to this as a tissue blade. To be honest, I'm only really using this to remove clay from the surface and to cut thin slices to condition the clay. You will need a craft knife a small polymer clay roller, something like um, a cable needle. These are four millimeter cable needles and I'm using two of them today. A cocktail stick. We're going to be putting the berries on some wire. This is 0.6 millimeter wire and I've chopped them into sort of three to four inches, so seven and a half to 10 centimeters. That's much more than we need, but you need longer so we can actually put it into shape and then cut off the excess. And with that, you need some pliers to cut the wire and some round nose pliers just to create a little loop at the end. And I'll go into details on that later. When I work, I'm working on a small sheet of baking parchment, grease proof paper, wax paper, tracing paper, anything like that, just a piece of paper that you can work around on and maneuver to make it easy when we're working. I've just made myself some very, very rough paper templates of leaves. You can do the same if you want to. So I've got one large and one small. The important thing is if you're doing this is to have a nice long tail on them. And if you are making templates, then obviously you need pencil and scissors to cut them out. I'll go on to the mica powders in just a moment. I'm using real leaves to create um, the shape and the indents and the veinings in the leaves we're doing today. These are hellebore leaves. There are lots of leaves available in the autumn time of year, so go and find some that work really well and you're just looking for the end to put some nice veining on your leaves. Moving on to the mica powders, there are loads of different brands of mica powders. For instance, this lovely one here, gold from Cernit. This one is Blonde Moments, we've got one here, Perlex, um, sometimes they just come in tiny little pots. Just get yourself a selection of the colours that you think will look good for the project you're going to do. If you don't have any of those, you can get some chalk pastels and with the edge of your craft knife just scrape off some edge of the chalk pastels to give you a powder and that works. Or if you've got some unused, unwanted, sort of shimmery or shiny um, makeup powder, they actually work well as well. You can often get big boxes of those, particularly at sort of the seasonal time of year when celebrations are happening um, for very small amounts and they work well. As well as the mica powders, you need brushes to put them on with, so I've got some brushes here. And because the mica powders or the chalk powders are very, very fine, you really should wear a mask when working with them. And that's something that I think most of us have to hand these days, sadly enough. Just to get the right sizes for what I'm doing, I'm using a couple of round cutters. This one is three quarters of an inch or two centimetres across. This one is just over half an inch or one and a half centimetres across. And I say that simply to get sizes for my, when I'm making my berries. We will need a little bit of liquid clay. PVA glue will work just as well if you don't have any liquid clay. And I've just decanted some into a pot because I just find it easier to use that way. 
When we're using our mica powders or any chalky powders, I find it easier to work on a sheet of paper. So I've got a couple here because I'm going to do you two examples of different colours. And it means all the mess goes on there and when you're finished you can just get rid of the paper and get rid of the mess. I like to add a little extra bling on the outside of my leaves once they're finished baking. So I use Gilda's paste. This is one brand, other brands are available, but you can generally get them in gold, silver or copper or bronze. And just to give a nice shine to our finished pieces, I will be using a polymer clay varnish. Now I'm going to be using the Fimo varnish, even though I'm using Sculpey Primo in today's make, um, but just find one that works. Most of the brands have their own. I'm using this because it's the one I have and because it works well for what I'm planning to do today. As always, I'm working on a big tile and when I bake, I bake on a small tile. When we're baking today, to bake the berries, a piece of corrugated card is really handy to sit them on um, so they don't go flat in the oven. And when we're baking our full leaves, I will use a piece of crumpled foil to support the leaf shape in what we are doing. I will also use a large sheet of foil to tent the tile in so that if the oven should spike whilst we are baking, the clay won't burn or be damaged in any way. And I will also be using biodegradable wet wipes and tissues to wipe and clean as I go. And of course, a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. If you don't have a pasta machine, just simply stack layers of playing cards either size and use your roller over the top till you get a nice thick or thin sheet of polymer clay, depending on what you are planning on doing. I think that's it on the equipment front. So let's move on to the clay. Today I'm using Primo by Sculpey because it has slightly more flexibility in the finished piece than something like Fimo Soft, which can be quite brittle. And the more strength or the more flexibility in your clay, the better it would be for this particular project. So for instance, Kato clay, which has a good amount of strength, would be quite good. But also Fimo leather effect is quite pliable once it's been baked. But also the new Cos clay, if any of you have got any of that, that's got a lot of flexibility after it's been baked. So they would also be very good. But for something that you're doing for yourself, where you know it's possibly going to be a little bit fragile when it's baked, then something like um, Sculpey Primo, absolutely fine. Just be a bit careful of all the little extruding bits and pieces when we finish baking it. So to go through the colours we're doing, I have got Periwinkle, Translucent, Pomegranate, Alizarin Crimson, Black and Olive Green. And that's going to be for the blue leaf with the blackberry version. And then for the green leaf with the red berries, we've got Olive Green, pomegranate and a little bit more olive green and for the amounts that we've got we've got one ounce or 28 grams of these two although it's cut differently the translucent is roughly the same size as the translucent the um, pomegranate and the alizarin crimson here all of which are about three and a half grams or about one eighth of an ounce you've got another little half extra piece of the black because we need more of the black than those colors so you've got about five grams or three sixteenths of an ounce of the black and then just a very small amount. It's about two grams or one sixteenth of the olive. So as I said, one ounce of this one and then of the pomegranate here, we've got about a quarter an ounce or seven grams. And again, just like this one, a very small amount of the olive green, about two grams or one sixteenth of an ounce. So the first thing I'm going to do is condition all of the clay in these sizes, in these blocks. If you're unsure of conditioning clay, I do have a tutorial which may help on that and I'll put a link to the, that in the details below. I will condition all the clays using my pasta machine and I will end up putting them through a medium setting, which on my pasta machine is number three, because on my machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. Having got them all conditioned and put them through on setting number three, then quite a few of them I will need to change the sizes for, but we will go on to that when we get on to making the actual pieces. When we're baking these necklaces, I will make the berries first and then once they're baked and done, they can be added into the leaves. So berries first, leaves second. And we'll start with the simplest of the berry. Do this one, because if you don't happen to have all of those colours, as you can see, this leaf combination can be done in simply two colours. We'll start with a nice, easy, straightforward berry. So I'm going to do the red berries to start with. So I've conditioned the red clay. 
I've got a little bit of the um, olive green clay and we're also going to need just a tiny little smidge so I've uh, got the black clay from doing the blackberries on here but it's tiny tiny wee little bit we're going to need of that so the first thing to do is to get this to the right thickness now I've worked out on my machine if I want three berries and I'm going to be using here the three quarter inch or two centimeter wide round cutter I know that this needs to go through on the thickest setting of my pasta machine and then when I roll the pieces up into um, berry sizes they're the size I want so now I've got that done, I'm just going to cut three pieces. Obviously you can have as many berries as you like, but I work on the basis that three looks quite nice in the design that we're doing. And I'm going to show you just on the, doing the one, and then obviously off screen I will repeat the same with the other two. So I'm just going to roll that into a round and then with my fingers just make it slightly tapered at either end not finessing the shape too much because we're about to put it on a wire but something roughly sort of berry shaped so with our wires and with your round nose pliers you just want to create something on the end that's going to stick in the clay and not pull straight through so whether it's a little loop like that which I'm doing just by turning the pliers round or whether you just fold in one end and create a sort of um, a squashed piece it doesn't really doesn't matter, just something that's going to hook in the clay and stick in nicely and not pull through. So all I'm going to do now is just push that right through the middle of the clay, pull it down and pull it into the clay. And now I can finesse the shape. So I'm just pulling it round. Give it a bit of a roll on the flat surface if you want to. We are going to have a little bit of green on the end here so you don't need to worry too much about this end and if you do find you've got fingerprints if you can just pull over it quite firmly just to pull any fingerprints off the outside of your piece the end bit needs to be relatively neat because we're doing nothing else to that and once you're happy with your shape that's all we need to do to create the shape and now we need to get to the mica powders so I'll put all these pieces off to one side because I don't want them to get covered in the mica powder. We will get our sheet of paper, we will get our three mica powders and I'm going to put my mask on as I mentioned. I've chosen a sort of metallic-y bronzy colour, a bright red and a nice sort of deep um, silvery sort of purpley colour. So I'm going to put those on with a brush and I do it very simply. I'm working on paper here because we're going to get messy so it's easier just to scrunch the paper up and I'm just going to take a little bit I always put it in the lid because if you put it in the lid then when we finish with that we can easily tip it back in and for this top bit I'm just going to go around the very top of the berry obviously I'll do the others two in a minute You can use different brushes if you want, but for what we're doing today it's probably not necessary. This one's just going around the sort of middle of the berry. And because I've already got the mica powder on the top, it's not going to re-stick on the top. And then finally, we'll put some of this deeper purple on the bottom. If you're doing it, do all three at the same time. But just for quickness, I'm just doing one. And then what I will do is I'll very gently just brush over the whole thing, taking away any excess. And that gives us a nice berry with different colours going up and down it. And it is that simple. So say so do that with all three. So you can take the mask off now. And now we're going to just create the little bits that's just going to sit on the, on the bottom. They normally have five little points. Um, so if you've got a very, very small five star cutter, that's amazing. Use that. What I will normally do is just, with a cocktail stick, just mark myself out five points. And then draw in between them to create a star going down into the middle. And it's usually very rough, very uneven 
but that's all you need and then oh yes and say I'm working obviously on a piece of um, the baking sheet here and then pulling outwards I'm just going to follow the lines of where I've cut take away the excess green from the sides and we have our little star with my fingers I will just take that away so you can see better with the fingers I'm just going to press around the points just to neaten it off because quite often when you've cut it looks a bit ragged and you can push them slightly smaller and make sure the clay is not too thin normally at this stage just do a tiny little hole in the middle with a cocktail stick and then it's up to you but I like to add a little bit of um, mica powder on the outside of these as well so I'm going back to my sheet and for this one I'm going to use pure bronze I've already got a fair amount in the lid here so I don't even need to do anything else just dab a bit not too much I'm really looking towards the ends more than anything else and again if you're doing your three do all three at once and of course I did put my mask back on so you can now take your mask off and then we are going to get a very small dab of liquid clay you don't really need it but it just makes it easier getting this to stick of course we've got the mica powder on now so the two clays aren't necessarily going to stick to each other but if you pick that up and pick that piece up you can generally just about get it to sit on and this is where the little bit of black clay comes in you get the weeniest weeniest little dot of black clay you can generally stick that in the middle and with something like your cocktail stick just push it down and that helps hold the whole thing in place give it twist reliefs and then these look good with these pieces bent up as if they're sort of curled over and facing downwards A bit like that and that is your berry completed so you need to do all three of those in the same way once you have your three pieces I have just simply concertinaed a piece of card sat them in the grooves so they sit nicely and don't roll around whilst they bake and also they don't get a, a shiny or flat bottom on one particular side of the berry so they are now ready to bake so bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using and whilst they are baking let's move on to the blackberries making the little blackberries is again a very simple process but it's a, a little more time consuming and a little bit more fiddly um, because we're going to roll up all these little individual balls but other than that it's very straightforward again so I've got my three wires which I've already put the little hooks or loops in We've got the translucent clay, which I've put on setting number three, which we'll come back to. That'll be the inner part of our blackberries. I've got the little bit of green clay, which again I've put down on setting number five. So we're going to do the same thing, cut out our little five pointed stars in that for the blackberries. And then we're going to create the berries for the blackberries. And of course, if you look closely at a blackberry, it's not all black. You tend to find some sort of bits with a darker red. And sometimes up towards the top, you will find the lighter red which is what I like to replicate when I do my blackberries there are of course loads of other ways of doing these and I think there are other tutorials out there but I like to make mine using a Skinner blend if you don't have these colours then of course just use plain black and you can create one completely with the black I've also made some in the past where I've actually gone through to sort of almost like a yellowy green at the top to have some that have really got unripe pieces because quite often when they sit on the bush you'll find the back which hasn't got to the sun has got a, a few green um, small bits in there as well as some of the red bits so the effect is actually again very easy to create and all we're going to do is we're going to do a Skinner blend between these three pieces if you've never done a Skinner blend before I do have a video tutorial with some hints and tips and techniques and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one but other than that normal thing diagonally through the end pieces 
and straight down the middle pieces and we have of course got more black than any of the other colours. Just fold those pieces together, add the black one through, fold those two pieces together and put them on top as we would normally do, a little bit of a roll. And then I'm going to fold that in half and put it back through the pasta machine, fold first, and these had gone through and were conditioned at setting number three, so I'm going to go one thicker setting number two on my machine because we've now got four um, layers of clay. Fold first, and each time I put it through, collect and fold bottom to top until we've got a nice blend from one end through to the other, and I will bring you back when I've got that blend done. So there you go, and we've got a nice graduation from the very dark through to the lighter red, and there's certainly more than enough here to do three berries. So I will normally cut it into three pieces. As I said, this has gone through on setting number two of my pasta machine, so it's a nice thick slice. And then I'm just going to push it together. You could also roll it up, of course. I'm just going to make it into a, a thicker piece so that I can actually roll this. And again, the size you roll it to depends on the size you want those little bobbly bits on your blackberries to be. And it doesn't need to be even, because if your um, little pieces are different sizes, that is absolutely fine. But once you've got it down to something, say probably about three millimetres, probably about an eighth of an inch thick, all I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it into lots of little bits. And this is the time consuming bit, because you're going to roll it up into little rounds. It's actually quite therapeutic, but it does take a little while. So if you'd rather not do that through the whole length, then stick to the other berries with the mica powder. Because that takes a fair amount of time to do, here's one I did earlier. And I tend to let them drop sort of with the dark at this end and sort of going up towards the lighter, but interspersed so that when I pick things up, they are quite random. So we're going to take that piece of translucent. I've got the medium sized cutter here, which is one and a half centimetres, just over half an inch in size. And as I said, this was through on setting number three, so medium setting. I'm just going to create three little rounds. Now these need to be a lot smaller than we're expecting our final berry to be, because of course we're adding all those little bubbles on the outside. But just as we did before with the berries, I'm only going to do one, um, but you do all three at the same time. And I'm just going to squish this together and this is the translucent because then when it bakes you can't really see it on the inside. Just roll it into a ball, just the same as we did before with our wires. Sit that in, make sure it goes nicely in. Press it back down around the outside and we're looking for a roughly sort of squat round or sort of that sort of shape so we can add our pieces on. Now again, the clay will stick to itself um, but it just gives it a little better sticking properties if you put just a little touch on the outside of your translucent clay. Just a little bit to make it tacky, so I'm just going to rub that round so you can see it's not even really that shiny because I've taken most of it off and it's nice and sort of tacky and that helps the extra bubbles to stick. And then it is very simply a case of adding your black or dark pieces on one at a time, or if they pick up together, that is fine. And because I put them down in a fairly random fashion, it doesn't matter if occasionally I pick up a slightly red one, because that just adds to the look of them being realistic. It doesn't matter if the bubbles are slightly different sizes, and what you will find is that as you work round, so they will start to fit together as if there were no gaps in between. When I get up towards the top, I can add some slightly lighter pieces in, or we'll certainly add some in a little grouping, so it looks like there's a piece of the berry that isn't quite as ripe, and just continue your way around. Okay. 
If you had a piece that looks too bright, you can always take it down. To me, the brighter pieces would be towards the top. But just keep adding them in. Until you have covered the whole berry. And there you have a fairly realistic looking blackberry with lots of different sort of slightly variable colours in the berries. And then all I did, exactly the same as we did with the um, other one, created my five points, created my little five pointed star, cut that out and again used a little bit of the bronze mica powder just on the edge and this time it just pokes through the hole and sits at the top of the berry and pushes up that way so it's going away from the bottom of the berry and exactly the same as I did before having got three I then used the corrugated card to sit them in to bake them and these three are ones that I baked earlier so once all your berries are finished whether they're these ones or whether they're the plain berries we can now move ahead and start to create our leaves creating the leaves is also very straightforward so we've got our clay and say we've gone blue there's nothing to say you have to stick to green leaves i've got my very rough template shapes i've got my leaves that i'm going to use to create the pressure and the end imprints on and i've got the mica powder and obviously then my mask as well also going to need a craft knife and then just a little sheet that we're going to put the clay on I conditioned this on setting number three but I've now moved it through onto my thickest setting on the pasta machine which on my machine is setting naught so I'm just going to lay this in place and then just very simply cut around it This is just a rough outline because we're about to put some serrated edges onto the leaf and it will also change shape once we put the leaves on it to get that nice leaf impression. So don't worry too much about being exact about this shape. You do, however, need a nice long bit at the end here because we're going to curl that round and that's creating the bale. Having got our two pieces, they're going to be sufficient to create our little piece in there. But before we do that, I'm just going to start serrating the edge. And all I'm doing is I'm just cutting in and taking out little triangular pieces. And you can make these as big, as small as you like. You don't have to do um, angles like this. You could do soft curves. If you wanted, just don't do this at all. Just leave your piece exactly with the straight edges. But personally, I find particularly if you're doing an unusual colour, the brain likes something else to sort of hitch onto to make it think, oh yes, that's a leaf. And certainly the serrated edges, for me, always work. And I do this now because I can add that into those pieces so we can have enough clay to get our smaller leaf as well. So just carry on cutting around the edges. Having done our large piece, I will take that off the sheet and put him on one side for a moment and then repeat exactly the same, put the um, clay back through the pasta machine on a thick setting, cut out the small leaf and again serrate the edges. So I'll bring you back when I've got that done. Keep some of the leftovers to hand because we're going to create another bit as I mentioned for the bale and then it's just a case of starting to put our mica powders on so because of that I will put my mask on. So I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to use very much just a, a blue to keep the colour of the leaves. As before, put a bit into the lid and I'm just going to sort of dob on. So nothing too exact, nice and random. Do one side, turn over and do the other side. And this one's keeping it very much the same sort of colour, but just giving me that lovely shimmer that the mica powders give you. As before, when you're finished, lid goes over, that goes on, and then we've got a nice sort of purpley colour, same thing. Now you'll notice I'm staying away from the edges, that's because I want the edges to mainly be the gold, which is the third colour 
of mica powder but it's completely up to you how you do this but I am going random just blodges splodges and blodges of mica powder same thing close up brush a little bit of a shake and then we're going to the last one which is this lovely bright gold and for this one I'm certainly going around the edge but of course it's not going to stick on where I've already put the other colours on and I'm also going to push in right into those side pieces as I go around the edges so I want the side of the leaf to be nicely gold as well before having done one side turn over go on the back and make sure you have done both sides we're going to add a little bit more gilders paste when we're finished so I'm not worried about the amount of gold because I can always add a bit more later on And then finally, I'll just give it a complete wipe over with my brush to make sure that every part of that surface has some mica powder on because that gives it a nice release from the leaf and means it won't stick. Having done your two, you've got your two pieces, I'm going to put this sheet to one side but keep it because I'm going to add a little bit more of the gold around the top of here in a minute but we will get our leaves now these leaves are nice and big but I'm only going to use the top and I've also already used these a couple of times and they seem to be able to be used more than once I'm going to line up so that main vein at the top of the leaf runs sort of down that way and then do the same in reverse I've got the end make sure it's completely on end of the piece in and the veins are lining up. The veins on this particular leaf are very deep so I'm not going to press in too hard because I don't want it to go all the way through the clay but I do want the impression of the leaf on both sides and in particular I'm pressing down around the outside to soften off and narrow down all those serrated edges we've put on and when, once you've done that and you pull the leaf off you should have a nice leaf impression and then you can just fold up slightly and curve it round and that will be one of our leaves ready to go and I will repeat with the same with the smaller one using the same leaves same process and just pressing down and now we can start assembling our necklace so I'm planning on doing this one with the three blackberries so what I need to do is to find out roughly where they're going to be placed and the easiest way to do this is to look on the big leaf see how far you want them to come down and sort of pinch where you think they're going to be disappearing so I think they're going to sit there and disappear about there and at that point you can start twisting the wires round this should be virtually hidden so don't worry about making it too neat but twist it round so you've got them all nicely together and because it's wired, we can change the position of these berries and sit them sort of like that, or have we want, later on. We're just going for the rough look at the moment. So I'm going to find my thick knitting needle, the one we're going to use to create the channel around the piece. And I am going to create a circle with the wire. Chop off any excess bits. And these berries are now ready to sit in amongst our necklace. I'm just going to round off just slightly these leaves, taking care that I'm not getting it too small as it goes down to that point. And then you can pull them forwards, again using your knitting needle. And where it comes down, just take off the excess. Yep, 
use your second knitting needle to just very gently press the clay in so you're creating a nice veil and then draw the line of where the vein was going up in the leaf. Repeat with the other one. So you've got your two pieces ready to go there and your berries either with the leftover pieces you've just chopped off or from your leftover pieces of clay roll yourself another longer thinner piece because this is going to sit over the top of the two where this piece fits in so I've just rolled myself a piece like that and now we're going to put them together so I will normally put small piece on then the berries and then the large piece but obviously put them together in any way you want and I will have it so that those two leaves are sitting over each other and then you're very gently going to press in I'm going to pull the berries up so that the wire is sitting down push those in further and then with this piece we can go right over the top and create a bale that fits in and covers over all of them Chop the excess off the back and as we did before, just very gently meld that in and we then have our bale nicely sitting in with our pieces and we can go back and either with our putting the mask back on get some of the excess mica powder that's still sitting there or if you haven't got enough then obviously use it straight out of the jar again I'm just going to cover over all those pieces we have just added to get a nice shimmer on the top of our leaves I've got a crumpled piece of foil which I've just sat on the tile we're going to bake on I'm going to gently twist out the knitting needle and then I'm going to put my leaves in the shape and the pattern that I want them to bake in. So I'm going to put a curl in that one, so sort of fold that one down around the vein and put a curl in that one. I'm going to stick the berries up in the air for the moment because they're already baked so they can sit where they like and I just want a nice supported curl for this leaf. So just press the foil up and around however you want the leaves to sit. Tent the whole piece in foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And to show you the colours I'm going to use, I'm going to do the red berries with the green leaf. So this is the olive green. I've done exactly the same as we did with the blue all the way through the serrated edges. And I'm going to use bronze, a sort of a lovely sort of deep sort of turquoise green and a brown that actually looks green when it's put on. And I tried a bit of this on this leaf first just to make sure that I like the look of it um, and I did like how it came out. So those are the three colours I'm going to use. So I'll fast forward but just show you the effect we get using those three colours on the green clay. And again, as always, mask on. So there are those leaves done and then we can do exactly the same with the berries, positioning where they want, twisting them up, creating the berry over the top and I'll get this one all ready and then get this one baked. Okay the piece has finished baking so I'm pulling the berries again up and out of the way because I just want to add a little bit of extra gilders paste right around the edge of this piece and to cover over any pieces which I don't like or where we may have joined the leaves together. So all I do with this is push out a little bit, put it on the end of my finger 
and then go around the edges. You can add as much or as little as you like. But for instance, where around here I've got very little at the moment, I really can go in and add quite a bit more. And sometimes I'll just add a little bit down the centre as well. So I'll just leave that for a little while, just for the gilder's paste just to dry off, only for about sort of 15, 20 minutes, and then I will get my varnish. And with a brush, first do the berries, again sat upwards so they're not going to touch anything else, and then do the rest of the piece. And I will generally put a piece of wire through the whole thing and do front and back at the same time. And I'll probably do one layer on the leaves, but possibly two or three layers on the berries to make them extra sparkly and extra shiny, to give that nice shine that blackberries have. I will then do exactly the same as I've just done with on this one with our green version. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to use copper or silver around the outside of that. I will have a look-see, but I'll get both those done, get them both varnished and come back when they're ready to show you the finished pieces. So there we are, there's the finished blackberry one. And you can see there the nice shine on the berries. And all I've done is just added a very simple um, finding, um, just a necklace piece and clasp. They're available from most bead shops and also online. And because we had a nice big opening there, it just slips very easily through. So that's the one with the blue leaves and the berries. And then we had the green leaves with the red berries, exactly the same. And the same clasp I put on it to create our necklace. There's another version with the blackberries again this time. And this time I've gone very much for the gold leaves with a bit of silver on the outside. And these leaves underneath were black clay with pure mica powder and gilders paste on them to give them that coloration. And then you can also go with different coloured berries. So these ones obviously have got the purple berries on as opposed to any other colour. And again, gold and silver on black clay. And so that's how the scrap clay would come up as well, or any dark coloured. So if you don't have any blue or green clay, and would rather just use scrap clay underneath, that's how it's going to come out. So there we go, that's that tutorial finished. I think they make very sweet little necklaces, and you can add all sorts of gun combinations. I put blackberries in one and sort of berries in another, but obviously you can mix and match, have sort of several different colours, or have more than three, however you want it to look. But those are the techniques you need to make a necklace like this. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Right, down to go off and have a look and see what other colour berries and leaf combinations I can put together. And I'd love to see what sort of things you make using this tutorial. That's it for now. Hopefully see you next time. Bye. <laughs>